Hello, my name is Tatlun Penry. I'm a solitary pagan witch and author. This is my St Bernard, little Noah, whom some of you know from my Facebook pages. Uh, <laughs> he seems to have decided to join in, but we'll do our best. Anyway, what I'm going to do is a series of short chats about various subjects. The growling, by the way, is little Lord that you can hear down under the table. She, it's like a sort of monster in the deep, you know, so take no notice. Anyway, what I'm planning to do is to bring to you a series of small chats, very informal, about various aspects of the craft and spirituality. And we're going to start off today by talking about what is spirituality? How do we know if we've found our spiritual path? Um, I think the first thing to remember is that we should think of a spiritual path as an awakening. Uh, sometimes people will say to me, and it's a very common question, how do I know when I've found my path? As though it's some kind of handkerchief you find all of a sudden in the middle of a park. It's not like that at all. Um, the spiritual path is, as I said, an awakening. It often starts early on in our lives, in childhood or early adolescence. And then it seems to blossom and we become more aware of it as we get older. And... Uh, it's a little bit like planting a bulb, you know, you plant a bulb in late summer, early autumn and uh, you forget about it because let's face it, all you've got for a couple of months is uh, dull brown earth and frost and snow and rain and what have you. And then come spring you get this little green growth and then out of nowhere flowers. And that's what a spiritual path is like. It's an awakening deep inside us. Um, we shouldn't think of it, and I think this is a mistake that's often made, we shouldn't think of it as a train ride where you get on it at one station and you get off at the other. There is no firm beginning and there certainly isn't an end. I haven't come to the end of my path, I don't expect to. It is, um, it's ongoing, if you like, it's an awakening and once awakened it keeps going. Um, I think it's important also to remember that spirituality is something that you cannot buy it. It's, it's not moved by how much money you're going to throw at it. Um, it's not as though you can go and say, well, I've got, you know, I've got a thousand pounds for this path and therefore I'm going to do better than my next door neighbour because it doesn't work that way. Um, a spiritual path is a great work. It is the great work. And this strange noise you can hear, believe it or not, is little Noah washing his paws. So please bear with me. This is what life in the Penry household is all about. Um, what was I saying um, about it being a great work? Well, it is a great work and it doesn't depend upon money. You know, sometimes I've had people say to me things like, I'd love to become a witch, but I can't do it until I've managed to save up enough money to buy um, a magic wand that I've seen. Well, first of all, there is no such thing as a magic wand. There are wands, certainly, but the magic is something you bring to it yourself. And secondly, the idea that somehow you cannot even begin to embark upon a path until you've gone and saved up some money and bought something, well, that's nonsense. Forget it. All right? It does not work like that. As I've said, spirituality is a work, it's a great work, and it is something that responds only to the amount of effort we put in. Uh, you can spend a lot of money on books, you can uh, spend a lot of money on workshops and things like that, but if you don't put the effort in, it's like water off a duck's back. It's not going to penetrate. You have to make the effort. And um, going back to the idea of, uh, you know, tools and things like that, I think it's important also to recognise you don't really need any tools. You need a good heart. You need to bring your talents, whatever your talents are, and we all have different talents, your talents of focus, certainly, your talents of intention and will, and we all have those to a greater or lesser degree. It's not like I'm asking you to be grade eight on the violin or something. So you bring a good heart, you bring your will, 
your focus, your intention, and you work with those. Now, the only thing I would suggest that is very, very helpful, uh, no matter where you happen to be on your spiritual path, is a notebook. And um, I tend to go for a notebook which is something like that. Um, this is my one for this year. Um, and it's hardbacked. And the reason I have it hardbacked is because where I live it's very, very wet always. And uh, softback covers tend to cool. And I like to be able to write no matter where I am. And I've got that size, which is A5, uh, simply because I like to be able to write, draw, uh, stick things in that have taken my fancy, photographs, articles, all sorts of things. Um, that's my kind of notebook. Yours may be quite different, and if you can get on with a, a small, cheap little notebook, that's fine. Do it. But the only thing I would say is don't be tempted to pull pages out of it. Good reason for that, and we'll get to it again. I'm going to finish this talk here now. Uh, because this is the end of the idea of finding the spiritual path. We've seen that you don't find it, it finds us, it, in, it unravels, it un awakens, it unveils itself to us, it reveals itself to us. Um, as we progress in life, we have to be aware enough to go looking for it, to be alert for it. Um, that's the important thing how we progress upon our path and what we do, well that's a slightly different one and we'll talk about that in our next chat when I'll start talking about the sort of things you can expect to write down in your little notebooks. And that's really it. I was just stopping there and I was thinking what else can I say but no that's enough. Thank you for staying with me and for listening. Goodbye.